channel um, I'm just starting my YouTube journey so for my first video I just wanted to show y'all how I get the ultimate milk with a lace frontal wig install um, this is my client Kaylin she's so beautiful and as you can see she got a thick head full of hair so what I'm just doing right now is parting it off so I can go ahead and braid that back and I'm gonna skip over the braiding process because most of y'all know how to braid back um, all I do is part it and just braid it straight back and then once I get to the next braid to the end of the next braid I connect the end of the braids together just so that we have a nice flat foundation so now I'm just taking some 91% um, alcohol and I'm just rubbing her hairline just to get rid of any oil um, or any dirt or anything that may be on her hairline um, because if you do not prep their hairline your install will not last at all so now I'm just using um, a bald cap um, method just to um, ensure that this install lasts as well and what I use for my ball caps are actually knee highs. <laughs> I pick them up from Walgreens um, for, I think they're like two for a dollar. So I use that um, for my ball cap. And what y'all see me doing right now is just going in with uh, the Bold Hold um, primer. And I'm just using that uh, across her hairline just to make sure that uh, that glue is going to stick properly to her skin as it should. So what I like to use for my ball cap because most of the time when my clients or just recently I've started um, using the bomb glue to lay my um, my ball cap just because it's easier for the client to take off and I feel like it's much much healthier for the hairline and for your edges because we don't want to lose any edges around here so I did tell her to take off her mask um, just so I can make sure that I'm laying that good and, I'm, and what I'm also doing is pushing her edges back make sure everything is protected we don't want any bald edges from um, improper lace installation So I'm just smoothing that back all along her hairline. Um, I go a little bit in front of her hairline, but not too much because we don't want that lace to end up touching her eyebrows. <laughs> So I try to make sure that I stretch that cap far enough out just so that um, it won't be so hard to get on her head. And I just use those sharp scissors, holding things sharp, and I just cut out um, her ear, some holes for her ears, just so that this cap will lay perfectly. And I'm just smoothing that bomb glue in. If I see that I need a little bit more, then I go back in and I put it on there as well. Definitely make sure you get around those ears good with that bomb glue or whatever you're using to lay your cap down with. And then I go right over that bomb glue with that got to be spray just to make sure everything is going to be nice and secured. And it also helps that bomb glue to dry even quicker. It already dries fast, but it just helps it to dry even quicker. And it also gives extra hold as well. So I'm just going to blow dry that and make sure it's all dry. And what I like to do is to go ahead and secure that ball cap 
with um, some needle and thread. So I just take that ball cap and I um, secure it with a needle and thread going from ear to ear in the back. Because it can get, it's annoying to me when the um, cap starts lifting up in the back. It's just very annoying. So I just use that to secure it. So this is her wig and she did get this wig from um, Nadula Hair Company. Um, the lace is really good, it was really thin, it was stretchy, um, it was really good quality hair as well. I actually um, dyed that hair for her, that color. Uh, she wanted a little bit of color added to it. So what I'm doing right now, I ran out of my LA Girl Pro Concealer. Um, that's what I normally use on the back of my laces for fair skin people, um, very lighter skin people, but I ran out and I did have some uh, Maybelline Fit Me. I forgot what shade it is, but I just used um, the back of that. Um, I used the back of a, a, a wig cap piece that I had, a piece of cardboard, and I just poured that foundation on there and spread it out so the foundation wouldn't cake up. And um, I'm just using that and applying it to the back and the front of that lace. A lot of people only put that um, foundation on the underside of the lace, the underside of the wig, but putting it on top, y'all, you talking about a melt, and it's just gonna match your skin perfectly, y'all see in just a minute. And what I also do, just so that um, if there are any oils in makeup, since I'm using makeup this time, liquid makeup, I go in with that Gotta Be Spray, and I spray that just so that it creates a barrier between the makeup and, um, her skin because we don't want any lifting and I just take it and dry that out as well So now I'm taking my hot comb and I'm going to uh, spray some Fantasia hairspray. I use the green olive oil kind um, and I spray that all along the front of that hairline of the lace and I just hot comb that back so it's getting any hairs out of my way. I don't want any hairs to get stuck in the glue or just in my way period while I'm getting ready to lay that lace down. So now I'm going in with that same foundation color all over um, that ball cap just to get it to blend in with her skin. And I still use the excess makeup that um, was left from that little piece of cardboard paper that I had poured it onto. And then just using that cardboard paper rather than the back of your hand, it just it's easier for the makeup to spread out if you're using liquid makeup. That way the makeup's not cake up caked up and you don't have a messy um, wig install. So now I'm taking these sharp scissors again and just cutting that ball cap, um, the excess cap off.
and it's easy for me to just pull that ball cap backwards from her face to make sure that I'm cutting off any excess cap that there is. And so when I'm done cutting, I just go back in with that alcohol just to clean up her skin again and just make sure that there is no excess oils or anything, any leftover foundation that may have gotten over there. I'm just cleaning it up. And as y'all can see, she has no baby hairs left out. We wanna make sure that we are protecting everything. So now I'm going back in with that same bold hole skin protecting over her uh, hairline, just to make sure that it is nice and protected. Um, and it also helps to get rid of any oils as well. So now I'm just fitting that wig on her. Y'all see that hairline? Yes, I plucked and everything um, and prepped before she came. Um, if y'all want a plucking tutorial or a customization tutorial, just let me know. I will be glad to show y'all how to do that. And as y'all can see, that matched her hairline almost perfectly. There's a few things that I'll need to do to get it to match it perfectly, but hey, I customized that real good. <laughs> So now I'm just taking an eyebrow razor and I'm just cutting that excess lace off. I think that, and don't come from me in these comments, but I really think that you get a better um, wig install when you pre-cut all of that lace off. It's just, it's easier, it's less messy. Y'all just try it just one time, just try it one time. Do my babies. I'm just giving them their little good morning kisses. They were just waking up. <laughs> so now I'm just taking um, the bold hold active and I am pretty much focusing on the, um, the ball cap portion right now uh, just to make sure that it's laying flat down and it ain't gonna go anywhere. And I'm just gonna take a popsicle stick and smooth that out. And I will use about, I think I use like four to five, four to five layers. Um, so yeah, that's what y'all finna see me do. So now that majority of that glue has dried clear, you wanna go ahead and take your lace and place it into that glue. And I just use the back of my fingers, my nails, to make sure that that lace is laying directly in that glue. Um, but yeah, y'all, this matched her hairline perfectly. I was so excited. I already knew this was gonna be a great install. And all I did to customize um, that lace, uh, that hairline to her natural hairline, I just went back and um, looked at some of her pictures on Facebook. It sounded real stalkerish, but I just wanted to make sure I had everything together. I went back and looked at some pictures and I just mimicked her hairline when I was plucking and customizing this unit. And as y'all can see, that is like, it's perfect. It's perfect. So now I'm gonna take an elastic band that I had um, made I put Velcro strips on it just because it's easier to use that way. My personal melt bands have not come in yet. I'm still waiting. I've been waiting forever, but I'm waiting on those to come in. And I'm just gonna take that um, blow dryer on warm and I'm just blow drying the front of that lace where that melt band is to make sure you know that it's melted good. So I let her sit with that band on for about 10 to 15 minutes. And now I'm just taking that off. And as y'all can see, it's not like completely melted now. But yeah, we're gonna get there. I'm gonna show y'all some tricks just to get rid of that ashy um, line that you may be seeing there.
So now I'm just pulling out the parts where I see that um, the lace was unglued down. I'm um, taking that hair and I'm parting it off. Y'all can see it lifting right there on the side. So I'm just taking all of that off. I'm gonna use my eyebrow razor to get that off. My arm in a way I can't really see. <laughs> But I just use my eyebrow razor just to get that excess lace lace off that we do not need. see any parts of the lace that didn't get glued down all the way and I'm just taking the end of that rat tail comb and I'm putting that glue under there just so we can get that perfect melt y'all And I just used the teeth part of that rat tail comb to um, push that lace into that glue so we can make sure that everything is laying down. So now I'm getting ready to part off her baby hairs or what I'm gonna use for her baby hairs. And I just do a really thin line. You don't want it too thick. going in with my she is bone wax stick and I'm putting that all on the front part of that hair just so I can get it to lay flatter and look a whole lot more neat and in place this is my favorite wax stick um, it's not a lot of oils in it um, this doesn't really leave the hair super heavy So now I'm taking my got to be spray, y'all. This is a crucial, crucial step. Not only does it give uh, that lace an extra hold, but it also helps to get rid of any um, harsh, ashy whiteness that you may see from lace. Um, this was, I think it was medium brown transparent lace and it definitely gave off that ashy look um, that y'all could see that when I first removed that band 
after letting that glue down. But this step right here is gonna give you like, oh my gosh, that melt is gonna be perfect. I'm telling you, it's gonna be perfect. So my client decided that she wanted um, her wig to be sewn down in the back. Um, it just gives extra security and it, the wig isn't flopping around in the back. So I just pinned her hair up and I sectioned it off and I'm gonna take um, some needle and thread of course and just sew that down in the back just so that her wig doesn't move. So Kaylin decided that she wanted a flip over um, part, which you know is not really a part, but she just wanted the flip over look. So what I do, or what I'm doing now, is going um, across the back where those tracks are beginning. And I'm just um, taking some hair and just making sure that it's covering up those tracks. And I'm gonna um, hot comb those down, make sure you know that they're staying in place. So her hair has been tied down for about, I would say 15 to 20 minutes now. And when I took off that band, like y'all see that melt? And do y'all see that hairline? So of course with me using the Got To Be Spray, that hairline um, or those edges are a little bit, you know, kind of sprayed down, spritzed down. So I'm just taking that comb and just gently combing them out. Ooh, look at that melt, y'all. It's so pretty. So now I'm taking that same eyebrow razor and I'm just using that to um, cut off um that excess hair we're not going to need all of that for the baby hairs 
And using that eyebrow razor, honestly, it gives a more natural look to those baby hairs. When you're using scissors, it's more of a blunt cut. Um, and it's hard for those baby hairs to form the way that you would like them to form. Oh, so when my clients come, I give them, I call them baby bags. And in those bags, they have like their essentials that they need to keep up with their lace. As far as a melt band, um, a bonnet, you know, and there's some extra little goodies in there as well. So I attended Arrogate Tay's class and I saw how he used those 3 4 inch um, flat irons to pre-curl those baby hairs. And this just helps your baby hairs to form even easier and better. And it's definitely beginner friendly. If you have a hard time laying baby hairs and getting them to form or swoop right, definitely do this first. And also it's good to use this when you want to go for those wispy baby hair looks. This is what you would need to use. So my client said that she wanted her baby hairs to stay in place. And when my clients need my baby hairs to stay in place, I go in with the, uh, the black bottle of got to be glue gel. And I just use that a little bit goes a long way because if you use a lot, it will cake up like a little bit. I use the teeth of my comb of the edge brush to um, get that product on there. And I just use that little bit and I'm just using my fingers to um, get that perfect swoop. And y'all, I do not use all of the baby hairs that I take out. I do not use all of that because it just looks so unnatural to me. So I actually push some of those baby hairs back into that hairline. But yeah, just watch me do these baby hairs. So I do go in with a blow dryer just to make sure that those baby hairs stay in place. Um, that just helps them to not move, they last longer, all of the above.
So now I'm just going in with my water and leave-in conditioner that I have mixed in that spray bottle. And I'm just saturating her hair so I can further detangle it and just get that wet, um, curly finish look that we're going for today. A lot of girls um, say that their stylists tell them to use mousse on their curly hair, but I prefer not to just because after time and a lot of that mousse, the hair begins to get crunchy and stiff and y'all, it is not cute when it gets to that point. And then when you get ready to detangle it, the, it's just breaking off and it gets the wig gets super thin and it's just a no for me, but that's just me personally. So this is the finished look, y'all, and she was so excited. This turned out really, really great. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and thank y'all so much for watching. Bye!